Hi, I'm Scott Mansell and welcome to Drive 61's University Series. Today's tutorial is the definitive guide to left foot braking. We're going to be taking a look at exactly what left foot braking is, why left foot braking is faster, when exactly we should left foot brake on track and some specific steps to learn left foot braking as quickly as possible. So what exactly is left foot braking? Well, the simple definition is to use your left foot to brake. Now, it's become much more popular over the last decade with more and more road cars and track cars um, having paddle shift gearbox systems. Therefore, we don't need to use the clutch when we're out on the circuit and we can transfer that clutch pedal, the left foot, um, across to the brake pedal to use the left foot solely for braking. Now, we can also use the left foot braking technique with sequential and H pattern gearbox systems, but things are a little bit more complicated. And we're gonna head into that a little bit later in the tutorial. So why is left foot braking quicker when we're braking on track? Well, the first thing to say is that if you're, the feel in your left foot isn't as good as your right foot, it's actually gonna be quicker to use your right foot for braking. Obviously, the braking phase through a corner is a very delicate section of the circuit, and we really need to make sure that we squeeze on the brakes and then bleed off the brakes as smoothly as possible, and as we've spoken about in other tutorials. So if you're gonna even consider left foot braking, we need to make sure that your left foot has really good feel. So the first reason that left foot braking is faster on the circuit is that the physical movement of your right foot when your right foot braking from the accelerator pedal onto the brake pedal is actually quite harsh. When your left foot braking, your left foot is already hovering over the brake pedal, so that initial input into the brake pedal can be a lot smoother and we can bring the brakes in quite gently. If you think about it, when your right foot braking, we have to physically take our right foot off the accelerator pedal, move it across and then get on the brakes. And this initial momentum that your right foot will have actually means that we spike the pressure in the brake pedal, which isn't what we want. We want to have a nice smooth application in the brakes. And when we use our left foot, we can do this. Because of this, the weight transfer of the car, and if you don't fully understand weight transfer, please see our other tutorial. The weight transfer of the car can then be much smoother. So as you're coming into the, the braking phase and you get on the brakes, if you brake initially quite smoothly, the transfer of the weight to the front of the car will be a lot smoother. And as we've spoken about previously, the less weight transfer that we have, the overall grip is increased. The third reason that left foot braking is faster on track is simply because we don't have any transition time between lifting off the accelerator and getting on the brakes again. Again, if we're using our right foot to brake, we have to lift off the accelerator, move our foot across, and then get on the brakes with the right foot. And even though it's only a small amount of time, it is time, so it will cost you a little bit of speed and a little bit of lap time. So left foot braking just means we can go from flat out on the accelerator straight onto the brakes. The fourth reason is that we have one foot solely focused on braking. So when we're using our right foot, even though we may have very good feel in our right foot, we're moving it from the accelerator to the brake to the accelerator, and these pedals have different weights and different feelings. When we're solely using our left foot on the brake pedal, we become completely used to where the brakes begin to bite in and the weight that we have to put into the pedal and the pressure we have to put into the pedal before the car locks up and to keep the car at the grip threshold. And the final reason is that we have the opportunity when we're left foot braking to use the brakes at the same time as the accelerator. Now this isn't something that we want to be doing at every corner on the circuit. There's really no need to do that. Where this is useful is, for example, if we have a fast corner that's almost flat out, think cops um, at Silverstone in a car that has some aero. It's almost flat out in a lot of aero cars. Um, that it's actually quicker to keep the accelerator flat out and just brush some brake pressure into the car so we have the accelerator and the brake on at the same time and the car will just turn in then because we're transferring a little bit of weight to the front of the car. The alternative is to lift off the accelerator 
but this actually causes quite a lot of weight transfer and it isn't as quick as just brushing the brakes. So when should we use the left foot braking technique when we're on the track? Well, it differs slightly between paddle shift gearbox systems, sequential systems, and H pattern manual gearboxes. So we've split it up into three sections. Um, firstly, with the paddle shift system, whenever you're on the circuit, because the gearbox takes care of itself and the downshifts are all um, when you pull the downshift paddle, um, we can use the left foot on the brakes whenever we're out on the circuit. So if you have the feel in your left foot, I would advise to do that. The only tricky thing is that in some track and race cars that have a paddle shift system, they still have a clutch pedal. So you'll actually need to use the clutch when you're leaving the pits and when you're coming back into the pits. And when you transition your feet across the pedals, it can become a little bit confusing. So imagine if you've got a paddle shift car, you're sat in the pit lane, your left foot is on the clutch and we have to select first gear with the paddle. Once we're in gear and we've let the clutch out and we're moving along the pit lane, this is when I'll move my foot from the clutch to the brake pedal. I'll actually also, when we're, when we're in the pit lane, just give the brakes a little bit of a tap just to know that the brakes are there and to feel where the biting point is. Now the more confusing part is when you come back into the pit lane full of adrenaline after your session. The tricky part is, is that we need to move both feet across one pedal. So the left foot from the brake pedal to the clutch and the right foot from the accelerator to the brake pedal. So as you're coming down the pit lane, just make sure that you're at a, a reasonable speed, speed, nice and slow, and move your uh, left foot across to the clutch pedal, ready to engage the clutch, but also very quickly move your right foot from the accelerator pedal to cover the brake pedal so we are ready to stop. And then as you're coming to stop, we simply dip the clutch, get on the brakes, and we can stop the car as normal. Um, in a sequential gearbox system car, um, when we're on the circuit, we can left foot brake at all times, providing that the driver has good technique and we have a nice strong gearbox in the car. The reason is, when we're downshifting and left foot braking, um, we still need to blip the accelerator pedal as we're downshifting, much like a heel and toe, but without the clutch. Now, in a paddle shift system, when you pull the paddle to go down the gear, the system automatically blips the accelerator to match the engine speed with the wheel speed. With a, a pure sequential gearbox system, this doesn't happen. So imagine you're coming down to a hairpin, your left foot will be on the brakes and you want to change down the gear. Well, when you push that gear stick forwards and it disengages the gear that you're in before we do the downshift, we just need to blip the accelerator at the same time. This matches the engine revs with the wheel speed and it means that we can have a nice smooth downshift. And again, obviously when we come into the pits, we need to do the same as we do with the paddle shift system and move our feet across. It's the same when we pull away from a standing start as well. We'll obviously have to use the clutch to pull away before we then move our left foot over the brake pedal. And finally, with a manual H pattern uh, gearbox car, obviously you'll need to use the clutch for upshifts and downshifts. So whenever we need to downshift for a corner, it's impossible for us to use our left foot over the brake because we're using our left foot to use the clutch and trying to heel and toe as we go down the gears. However, we can left foot brake in a manual H pattern gearbox car when it's a corner where we don't need to downshift. Now, the thing with this is it's quite difficult because you'll be using your left foot on the clutch, you'll be using your right foot on the brakes for, for a lot of corners where you've got to downshift, and then moving them across um, to use a left, your left foot for where you don't need to downshift can be a little bit confusing because of the difference in pressure. The clutch movement is very different to when you're getting on and off the brakes. So, just be careful with this. And to be honest, I wouldn't really use it in this type of car um, unless the corner is almost flat out and, um, and, and then you use your left foot just to cover the brakes as you're coming into one of these corners that's almost flat out. So for example, like I mentioned previously, cops at Silverstone, if we're coming into here, we can maybe keep the throttle flat out on the accelerator and we just brush the brakes just to knock a bit of speed out the car and to make the car turn at the corner entry. 
but for all the other corners, I wouldn't left foot brake in a manual gearbox car. So you've decided left foot braking is for you and you want to give it a go on track to try and save a little bit of lap time. How exactly should we learn to left foot brake and what are the best practices as we're trying to learn this difficult technique? Well, the first thing, as with many of the techniques we speak about on Driver 61, is to practice in your road car. You spend a lot of time in your road car and it's a lot cheaper to run than a track or race car. Now, to learn this technique in a road car, it's better if the road car is, has an automatic transmission. That way, when you do try the left foot braking, the gear, gears can downshift by themselves and you don't have to worry about downshifting yourself. Now, when a driver first tries left foot braking, they often get on the brakes way too hard and almost spit themselves through the windscreen. The reason for this is that the left foot is usually used for the clutch and obviously the movement of the clutch is a lot harder than we would generally have with braking. So when you try this for the first time, make sure that you have no cars behind you but also in front of you because you know obviously it's a difficult thing to try for the first time and we don't want to have any accidents. Now when you have your left foot over the brake pedal, make sure the heel is on the floor so we have a solid base and it helps the, the foot to be a lot more stable and consistent when we're getting on the brake pedal. Now when you first touch the brakes, just really focus on having a very delicate touch, especially when you're in a power assisted uh, road car that will actually help you to get on the brakes. The, the pedal's a lot lighter in a road car than it will be in a race car, so you need to be a lot more sensitive. So really focus on the initial pressure. Don't stamp on the brake pedal. Really gently increase the pressure. Once you've started and, uh, to get on the brakes and, and the car's begun to decelerate, just gently ramp up the pressure and almost play with the pressure so you're trying to build the sensitivity in your left foot. Once you've done some deceleration, then really, really focus on coming off the brakes as smoothly as possible. This will be the trail braking area of the braking phase if you were driving on the circuit. And as you all know, we need to make this phase as smooth as possible. So think about the front of the car. If the front of the car just pops up and you can actually feel the front of the car rise up, then you've actually done it too quickly and you've come off the brakes too harshly. So really focus on coming off those brakes as smoothly as we can and bringing the front of the car up as smooth as possible and as gently as possible so you can't even feel the point at which it comes up completely. Um, and then it's just a case of practicing and practicing and practicing. The more you do it, the easier it will become as your muscles get some memory of the movement that we want and as I mentioned when you then get into a track car because generally they'll have a pure system that isn't electronically assisted the feel that you get through the the pedal on a track car or a race car is a lot more than you'll get in a road car so if you can get it all sorted on the in in your road car then it's much easier actually in a race car so when you first um, go to try it on the circuit first of all make sure that when you do it on the road you don't even have to think about it. You need to practice enough so that it becomes in your conscious. It, it, it's easy to do. You don't have to think about the technique. Then, when you try it on the circuit, try it first in a car that you're very familiar with, your track car, and on a circuit that you're very familiar with. What we're trying to do here is lower all the other information that you need to think of when you're on the track so that you can focus on your left foot braking technique. And if you've already done it well and, and thousands of times in your road car, then it should be quite a simple transition to put it then into practice on the circuit. So that's all for today's tutorial. Thank you very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed it. If you did, please share this with your social media and I'll see you next week.